Good day everyone and welcome to this module number three. This module covers the traditional layer two and layer three connectivity to an external network. And uh, as you know, traditionally the applications hosted by the data center require layer three connectivity to either your external core network or campus or directly to your WAN. And uh, we will talk about this in a few slides. But before we talk about external layer three connectivity, sometimes you need to extend the layer two segments from your legacy data center to your VX and VPN fabric for you know any reason. And this section covers the connectivity for a classic LAN to a VX and VPN fabric. So here is a VX and VPN fabric. And uh, sometimes you need to attach a classic Ethernet network to the fabric, either a single top of rack uh, switch not supporting VX and VPN, or sometimes for migration purposes, you need to extend the layer to bridge domains between your legacy data center network and your greenfield fabric. Typically, hosts are attached at layer two to the leaf nodes using uh, access port for bar metal or dot one q trunk for the virtual machines, either using a single home uh, fashion or more often a port channel dual home uh, to a VPC pair of uh, leaf devices. And quite often we need to also attach a classic Ethernet switch as a top of rack during uh, the transition period to VX and VPN, for example, or because you still need to connect your legacy data center network for a short or long period of time for any reason, right? And in this case, the layer two connectivity is as simple as attaching a host using a port channel toward a pair of border leaf nodes. And there are various reasons for layer two extended from the classic LAN to the fabric. Could be for hot live migrations or just because somehow layer two transport simplifies the daily operations. And then you can leverage DCNM to handle the external layer two connectivity the same way you want to attach a host in a resilient design. From the concerned device, you just uh, right click uh, to call the interface management window. You add a new virtual port channel. You add the interface members as usual. And the key difference with a host is that you need to customize the spanning tree protocol to protect against uh, risks of uh, blocking the layer two connectivity, such as disabling the BPDU guard and uh, uh, the port fast, uh, which are enabled by default. Okay, so step by step, this is just a quick refresh to what we have seen in module two. Uh, in order to attach a legacy data center networks to a VX and VPN fabric using DCNM 11. First, you create a classic LAN fabric with the classic LAN template and you import your traditional data center network devices into it. Then you create the uh, VPC interfaces and you create the multi site domain. And this is where the function of top of rack becomes useful. Remember, we change the rule of the aggregation layer to top of rack, and this is to automate the network deployment to the VPC interface uh, facing the multi-site border gateway devices. Then you move the classic LAN to the multi-site domain, and this way you tell DCNM11 to automate the deployments of networks across all fabrics, including the top of rack that belong to the classic LAN and then you deploy the network to the interface facing the uh, classic Ethernet devices. And from the MSD fabric, you save and deploy to automate the deployment of the networks from uh, the classic LAN up to the uh, VX and VPN fabrics. So here's the demo, right? So basically, uh, we will connect the classic LAN fabric with uh, top of rack as a rule to automate the deployment of uh, the networks. The goal of this uh, demo is to extend the layer two connectivity between the classical LAN and the VXLAN VPN fabric, even going further with uh, the VXLAN VPN multi-site. You have seen in module two how to import the classic LAN into a DCNM topology, 
and uh, the classic LAN fabric is now physically connected from its aggregation layer to a pair of uh, Nexus NANK that offers the function of multi-site. That means extending the layer 2 and layer 3 network toward a greenfield VXLAN VPN fabric. The first step is to configure the virtual port channel that links the legacy data center network with uh, a pair of uh, VPC border gateways where the function of multi-site is initiated. As mentioned in module 2, eVPN multi-site can be leveraged uh, to extend the networks also with uh, legacy data center networks. From the classic LAN scope, configure a port channel 111 at the aggregation layer facing the VPC border gateways in Fabric 1. You have seen the creation of VPC in Module 2. Disable BPDU guard here uh, to prevent blocking any links and uh, don't add any VLAN in the trunk at this time. DCNM will automate this action later in, in this video. Now you can save and deploy. Change the scope to Fabric 1 that represents your DCI border gateway and create a virtual port channel facing now the classic LAN. Okay, so disable BPDU guard as well as the port type fast. Don't add any VLAN in this trunk. You have now a double side VPC back to back with the port channel 111. Save and deploy. And wait a few seconds that the VPC 111 becomes consistent. And now change the scope to the MSD fabric and add the classic LAN. The next step is optional. It is required only to automate the deployment of VLANs into your classic LAN through the top of rack device. The first action. You need to check the flag enabling the auto deployment for the top of rack. If you remember, when you imported the classic LAN in module 2, you assigned the role of top of rack to the aggregation layer. With that rule in mind, DCNM note that your intent is to auto-deploy the VLANs to these top of rack devices, the aggregation switches, if you will. The second action is to move your classic LAN into the multi-site domain. The same way we have done this with uh, VXN VPN multi-site uh, during the module number two. And uh, then you want to, to extend the previous VLAN 2100 and 2101 toward the aggregation layer. Go to the network control windows and notice the two VLAN 2100 and 2101 already exist. Select them and continue. As you can see, these two layer 2 network segments have been deployed in if 7 and 8 in the Fabric 2, as well as uh, across the four border gateways used to in interconnect back-to-back -back the VXLAN uh, eVPN fabric uh, with the classic LAN. Select the two border gateways uh, in Fabric 1 and you can notice the two VLAN have been uh, deployed on port channel 36 which is used to attach a physical host. You need to add the port channel 111 attaching the classic LAN for the two networks. Notice that the CNM auto populate the VPC interfaces. You can now save and deploy it. Remember that you can preview the configuration pushed toward the um, border gateways with the two networks. Go to the Fabric Builder and select the scope MSD, multi-site domain. And do save and deploy. A 
as shown in the config deployment, all nodes are in sync except DC1 aggregation 1 and DC1 aggregation 2. You can preview and uh, you will notice that DCNM will auto configure the trunk for the port channel 111 with VLAN 2100 and 2101. Save and deploy. Open the uh, control interface for Classic LAN and check the VPC 111. As you can see, the VPC 111 in Classic LAN is now configured with the VN 2100 and 2101. You can now verify the layer 2 and layer 3 extensions of uh, these two VLANs between the servers attached to Classic LAN and the servers that belongs to the VXLAN VPN fabric number 2. From the border gateways attaching the classic LAN, you can retrieve the local endpoint from uh, the classic LAN 10.6 and the remote endpoints in Fabric 2 10.21 and 11.21. So you can see now the virtual port channels are being visualized in the topology.